get going. Uh, did you forget something? Yeah, I didn't state my pronouns before I entered the newsroom today. So embarrassing. It's the same kind of humiliation like if you've ever had a dream where you show up for work naked, but you don't realize it until you get to work. So embarrassing. Uh, you are naked. Hmm. Didn't notice that. Surprisingly, not embarrassed, though. I must have forgotten to get dressed after I did the morning drag show for kids. Welcome to tonight's mental terrorism. The people are finding things out and our whole house of cards is crumbling, but we're still trying to save it with our top stories we'll deceive you about this evening. The CDC approves the to become part of every child's inoculations. Moderna CEO says boosters aren't necessary, while Switzerland is destroying 10 million doses. Researchers have created a variant in a lab with an 80% kill rate. Thank God they're doing that. Censorship might just be losing the war on free speech. And a new poll shows the majority of people believe the mainstream media is a threat to our democracy. And those people can go screw themselves as we'll attempt to shape your thinking about that and more in just a moment. But first, in what could possibly go wrong with this news, researchers at the University of Boston have created a variant that has an 80% kill rate on mice that they've tested it on. I like to think of people as just future mice. But some people who are being misled by the misinformation of common sense and lessons from past mistakes are shocked that the researchers would be doing this. But these free-thinking morons simply don't understand the benefits that come from creating a variant with an 80% kill rate. The benefit of this breakthrough research is that if they can somehow manage to keep the variant from escaping from the lab, then no catastrophic harm to humanity will be done. So it's a cool way for them to practice containment. The other main benefit is that if a bat were to get into the lab and then spread this variant to people while it's doing bat things, then could you imagine the level of compliance it would create? Could be great for business. But will it happen? I think so. Can't wait. But the Boston researchers pushed back, saying their research made the virus replicate less dangerously. And they went on to say, ultimately this research will provide a public benefit by leading to better targeted therapeutic interventions to help fight future pandemics. Those future pandemics are the ones we can't wait to benefit from. I think we'll be able to stick the landing on passports in the next one. Moving along. A journalist investigating Biden has been raided by the FBI and hasn't been heard from since. And we're not going to cover this one. What's next? A recent poll reveals that many Americans believe the mainstream media is a threat to our democracy. I am outraged. In the poll, 71% of people said they believe that our democracy is under threat in the US. And of those people, 59% said the mainstream media is a major threat, while 25% consider mainstream media a minor threat. They think we're a threat to democracy? If that's not misinformation, then I don't know what is. Nothing could be further from the truth. Let me break it down for you. Our core ethos at the media are for us to be pro-censorship, anti-free speech, pro-narrative, anti-truth, we do our very best to influence elections by smearing the political opponents of our anti-democracy administration, we promote the irreversible mutilization and sterilization of children, promote racism every chance we get, we wipe our butts with the Nuremberg Code and smear it in your face with 75% of our funding coming from pharmaceutical companies, and accordingly. We've done our very best over the past couple years to create a second class of citizens, all wrapped in the context of terrorizing you with fear so you'll be more controllable. So for the soulless life of all of us at the media, we cannot understand why so many people think we're a threat to democracy. They're simply incorrect. If anything, we're the ones who are trying to save our democracy based on what we tell you to think. By the way, the fine folks who control our puppet strings didn't approve those people to think those thoughts in the poll. 
So with the upcoming social credit score system we'll be pushing, they'll be sorry. Look forward to seeing the polls after that. Moving along. In our efforts to be even better at clubbing your mind like a baby seal with our fear mongering, we have breaking news! We've just received reports that a completely uncensored comedy special is being released today. It's called Please Censor This by so-called comedian and confirmed dangerous extremist J.P. Sears. In spite of the ever-growing censorship that big tech uses to protect you, the comedian found a way to stick a middle finger in the face of the censors to bring Please Censor This to the world by partnering with free speech platforms, Rumble, and Locals. This leaves us utterly helpless in our efforts to censor, shut down, and ban what the Thought Police definitely don't approve of. Worse yet, Please Censor This is the first ever comedy special made specifically for freedom lovers by a freedom lover, which is obviously fascism and threatens our democracy and our whole damn agenda. However, even though this special is causing more outrage and harm than using the wrong pronoun on a college campus, it is being tyrannically acclaimed by some of your favorite leaders. Here's what they had to say. There's no insider trading information in it. It sucks. Nancy Pelosi. Please censor this came from a bat and we need to slow the spread. Anthony Fauci. How did he get away with this? Mark Zuckerberg. False, the fact checkers. Because of please censor this, we need to close schools and shut down all businesses. Gavin Newsom. My wife is not a man and I despise this comedy special. Former president and probably current president Barack Obama. We need to kill comedy and it should count as a COVID death. The CDC. Please censor this caused January 6th, Liz Cheney. My speechwriters didn't write anything for me to say about it. Former Vice President Joe Biden. This is literally violence. Blue haired lady in Portland. I'm not showing this in my concentration camps. Justin Trudeau. Abortions are the only way to get police censor this shut down. Stacey Abrams. It's really good if you watch it on crack. Hunter Biden. I never flew on his jet. Bill Clinton. They love it, I guess. But you should hate it. Do not get access to Please Censor This by going to pleasecensorthis.com, where you can also get a VIP bonus edition with full access to the Freedom Lovers community. In the meantime, we'll continue working hard to shut this thing down in our ongoing efforts to protect you from the three biggest dangers in our country, free speech, truth, and comedy. Back to the stuff we're in control of. In a unanimous vote of 15 to 0, the CDC has voted to recommend the be included in the childhood schedule. This means the high risk category of babies as young as six months old will get it. It also means that your child won't be able to go to school unless you change their gender identity to guinea pig and comply like you should. The CDC's ruling comes just a week after the scientifically powerful testimony of a Pfizer executive when she told the European Parliament that their product has never been tested to see if it stops transmission. This even though the company has been proven to purport that it does stop transmission. But good healthy guesswork is simply the speed at which science moves. The CDC's vote stands on even stronger validity when you consider that the product also doesn't stop infection, which is further evidence that all children should be subjected to it. But the CDC's ruling gains even more credibility as the Moderna CEO came out the next day saying people under the age of 50 don't need boosters. This as Switzerland announces they'll be destroying and disposing of 10 million doses that they've previously purchased from the pharmaceutical giants. While in Denmark, they're no longer recommending the product for people under the age of 50. A near flawless combination of events that leaves no question about the CDC's integrity in protecting the pharmaceutical companies from parents and children who don't care about profits. Meanwhile, Pfizer has just announced they'll be hiking the price of their product by 400%. I guess because it's more valuable than ever now. This just in! Hillary Clinton without makeup is George Soros. And in Canada, 
Dr. Makis, the author of over 100 peer-reviewed publications, is urging the Canadian Medical Association to investigate the 80 deaths of young doctors in Canada, which is an increase of 800% more deaths above the baseline for some reason. Well, if we have anything to do with it, and we do, I don't think they'll find anything unusual about these unusual deaths. That's it for tonight's news. People are finding things out. We don't like it, and our whole house of cards is crumbling. But we can't stop now because we don't want to go to jail. And please censor this. It's available now. Don't watch it. Good night.